Hello everyone and welcome to the show. It is a local chat episode 156 Joining me this week as always the one the only Ian Gibson Hello, hello. I'm here to talk about video games Video games is the thing this person likes. What is Karen? Hello, I do like video games it's true, Karen likes video games. Karen's here gracing us with her presence for the first time since the war of 1812. That's right, folks. <laughs> Careful now. I was gonna say, where is this going, buddy? Where is this going? Divorce court. The war? <laughs> and we can move on. Oh my goodness, wait, I'm sorry. Before we get into it, we almost had, had a divorce moment today. Will texted me. <laughs> Oh, um God. this afternoon because i asked him um you know he he said he wasn't like feeling great he wasn't sure so i checked in on him and he said he he texted me oh i had the uh, um oh yeah uh, for lunch i warmed up uh the leftovers and i hate them and i was like what he's like no no i ate them i ate them <laughs> I, said, I like she i like wrote that and i saw divorce and i was like what divorce. <laughs> i was like oh what are you talking goodness. about and i look up and it just says i hate these leftovers <laughs> <laughs> i was like damn it's like brutal <laughs> so i pretended i said h um jeez <laughs> i did eat the leftovers they were delicious uh great reels recipe um for you uh, uh, that Instagram reels they got lots of recipes I don't know if they have those there on TikTok you know you youngins uh, but if you want to make food they have the, the, those reels. fake those <laughs> fake uh, food recipes like hey just bleach the strawberries and you got white strawberries oh yeah I've done that before that works <laughs> <laughs> just just put them in the laundry they'll wash themselves um, folks we're here to talk about video games before we get there we gotta chit chat a little bit because that's what the document says, um, I would like to talk about the Oregon Trail. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Uh, it is a trail. Uh, and that's it. So moving on. Uh, no, I've been reading The Indifferent Stars Above, which is the mm -hmm. book about the Donner Party. Uh, it is um, awful and horrible. <laughs> And if, I was going to say, why the fuck are you reading this, man? Come on, we know it is, what it's about. It's, I, I'm not, I don't want to know more details, so why would I read a book about it? <laughs> I think know? my husband's a serial killer. If you want to know how to skin people and dry their meat, I have oh a book for you. Um, it is wild. Um, I knew nothing about it other than the, like, eat people joke. So <clears throat> it is just tragedy after tragedy. Anyways, um, what I actually want to talk about is the Oregon Trail games are very fun. I don't know if you've played them before, Ian. I played them in school. We had one on CD when I was a kid. Karen, I don't know if you've played them as well. Um, they're pretty good. I, I did not play them as a kid, like at the time when people played it. I think I played it later on, but didn't fully get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I they're like... It. I mean, my favorite thing about that game is you shoot all the animal. It's like, you, carry, you can carry 20 pounds of the 1,500... <laughs> pounds of buffalo yeah. you shot well, it feels real good <laughs> it does there's feel so good. many of them never gonna run out <laughs> never gonna run out they got piles of them uh, free meat but yeah. it's funny this ties in because i was i mentioned this on on the untitled goose game stream but i was like why don't they make a game where you just start in independence kentucky i think it is or kansas and you just Sorry? Uh, or it might be Missouri, and you just like the they have the topographical United States, and you just have to walk like Oregon Trail yeah. 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's called Oregon Trail. No, but I mean like Red Dead <laughs> Redemption 3D. Remastered. Um, and then we looked at that oh. big walk game, okay. and I think that is essentially what I'm talking about: is you're just walking with people to walk. the next place and like overcoming hurdles as you go there. But I think, mm -hmm. like, a third person or first person just walk across, um, uh -huh. walk across the, uh, um, the yeah, United States like a moving, would be crazy. A, a moving survival game instead of yeah. a stationary survival game. Yeah. Mm. And you can, like, upgrade your cart. And, and it was, like, reading about it, it was, like, heartbreaking, like, the things you just, like, resign yourself to abandon as you're going. You're just, like... Or the people who just wander off in the darkness, and you're like, 
I can't find them in the darkness because flashlights don't exist and we have to keep walking. Uh -huh. It's like absolutely yep. wild. Um, Jake. Great story. Hi, Jake. Hi, Halucha. Uh, yes, I should watch Society of the Snow. It's about the Andes crash, the rugby team. I want to read the book first, though, which is by one of the guys who was there. So uh, can't trust his account. Am I right? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I swear, I didn't eat any of them. Everybody else was eating everybody, but I didn't eat yeah. any of them. He I said just we could. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. That's my Oregon Trail story. I hope you liked it. Thank you for coming. To I'm my sorry. Talk. I, I was going to let it go. How do you pronounce it? Oregon? It's just, it just sounds, that doesn't sound right. Oregon. Is saying Oregon or yeah, Oregon, Oregon wrong? Oregon. I think it's Oregon. I'm yeah, you're, you're pronouncing the gone, really. Polygon, like, Oregon. 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 The decahedron. Oregon. Oregon. I ran out of metal. Oregon. Oregon. Oh, my Oregon. Or, Oregon. You're saying Oregon? Is that what you're saying? More. It's Oregon. Pregnant. Warship. Warship? Portland, Oregon. <laughs> Warship, yes. Ian and Warship. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Oh, I don't know who's... I don't know who's right and who's wrong here. I just know I pronounce it differently. <laughs> Oregon. And it's confusing me. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was, that's, that's Oregon. how I say it. Oregon. 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 Um, oh my goodness. Oregon. The other place I want to talk about <laughs> is uh, Los Angeles, which is how I pronounce that. Um, uh, city of Devils. City of, yeah, City of Devils. Um, <laughs> oregano. Uh, we watched Escape from L.A., and folks, I don't know. Have you seen Escape from New York, Ian? I've seen Escape from New York. I have not seen Escape from L.A. Okay. Escape from New York is a fantastic movie that rules. Yes. Escape from okay. L.A. is a terrible movie that's awful. And it's, it's almost <laughs> like it's almost like the same director decided to make a spoof and have like the same cast. Like everything is the same, but he's like, let me take. The first movie I made and just make a spoof version of it. Yeah, it was. Okay, so like, I honestly, I don't think Evil Dead 2 is bad. But when I watched Evil Dead 2, it felt like I was in a fever dream because I was like, this is the exact same movie as the first one, isn't it? And it's it's weird. And it sounds like this is the same same. Kind yeah. Of and, and it's actually funny that you compared it to that because I when we were watching it, I compared it to um, Evil Dead 2. But the yeah. difference is that, like, Sam Raimi really leans into it and owns it. Yeah. Whereas, uh, I forget the name of the director for... Um, Snake Plissken. John Carpenter. Self-directed. Well, so, so <laughs> he tries to lean into it, but is unsuccessful in that sense. Gotcha. I, I still want to watch it one yeah, day. It's, on it, my it's list. worth a watch. It's not great. Um, it's weird. Steve Buscemi in it and uh, some random other people. Uh, oh no! Well, well, Bruce Uncle Campbell ben, is in it as well. Bruce Campbell is in it as well. Yeah. Actually, his is the only thing, and he's the best part of it. And Bioshock just stole him for their game. Uh, and I'll wait till you get there, and you'll know exactly okay. what I'm talking about. You said um, Steve Buscemi's in it. How? When was this movie made? It was the '90s. I think it was. It was okay. I think, I think it might have been ten years, years later or fifteen years later. Oh, it was like ninety five, wow. ninety six, yeah. or something. Wow, I didn't know it was that late because because when you said Steve Buscemi, I always thought Escape from L.A. was an eighties movie, and and the thing about Steve Buscemi is so he was Steve a Buscemi in the, he, but he was also trying to be a stand up comedian in New York in the eighties, and I always remember Gilbert Gottfried's story about how. When Gilbert Godfrey was popular in the 80s as a stand-up comedian, Steve Buscemi was also there, and he just bullied Steve Buscemi the whole time. <laughs> and he talks about the one time that he was quote-unquote nice to Steve Buscemi. Like, it was like 3 a.m., the club finally closed, and it was just him and Steve Buscemi left, and he's like, hey, Steve... You want to share a cab? And Steve's like, yeah, yeah, I'll share a cab. You know, you Gilbert <laughs> Godfrey and they share a cab and they get to their location and Gilbert's like, hey, take care of it. Why won't you? And he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so funny that Steve and Shimmy's more famous than all of them now, but they just treat him as like a shitty little oh, bad comic back then. That's amazing. Oh. I love that. Yeah. So it was decent. My coworker actually told me his, um, his dad worked on it in the prop department. And they got mm -hmm. to, I, I like mentioned it out of the blue. Uh, and he was like, oh yeah, we went to set one day and it, it ended us 
uh, something happened and we all had to be shuffled out. And I was like, oh, okay. I won't say what happened, but um, it is just like, it's not something bad. It's just they like were being stupid kids what. and they got kicked out. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I was like, why would you bring anyways? Uh, but he said, even then he was like, yeah, I don't think it was going to be a good movie. Um, but yeah, Escape from L.A., Go watch Escape from New York twice instead of watching. Or actually, you know what? The other thing I said, go watch Luke Besson's lock lockout that That's lost the lawsuit. Yes, that was a, that <laughs> because was a better that movie. Because that is a f- way better movie <laughs> yeah. than uh, Escape from L.A. Um, I genuinely 100%. like Lockout. It is, it is a, it's not even that bad of a movie, but it's just like a fun action movie uh-huh. that's that's kind of wild. Raunchy. <sighs> Raunchy. Luke Besson's, he's great. Even even his, like, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, whatever that, that everybody hated, I was fine with it. It's not amazing, but I'm like, yeah, this is a solid sci-fi movie. I'm okay with this. He just makes, like, unique, good movies, and some of them are fantastic. Yeah, I like him. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's the Chit Chat section. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to subscribe, and we'll uh, send those emails off to you. Uh, moving on to the games we've been playing this week. Karen, I'm going to start with you because uh, I want to. And uh, we're going to do that. So please tell me all about the games you've been playing. Tell Ian about them because I already know what they are. Okay, so more recently, um, I've been, I started uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, that, actually, Sorry, I just get confused. Is that the first one or the second one? That's the first one. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, because I just finished Pentiment, which I will come back to, but I just wanted to start on Jedi Fallen Order, um, just because I've played the least of it so far because I just started it. Um, uh, but I do really like it. Um, what was nice was the um, there's the free PS5 upgrade. So, um, which is oh, it was free. Uh, That's wild. yeah, which was a massive improvement visually. Yeah. Um, I think it was like another 30 uh-huh. gigabytes uh, downloading it. But anyway, so far, um, I, I do really like it so far. Um, what, what, uh, what I, the way that I feel about Star Wars media is I do like the independent stories away from like the main Skywalker yeah. arch. I feel like most of that media has been pretty good as opposed to like, the newest trilogy um or even uh-huh. like the like the prequel trilogy um so i do like that this is like a pretty like there's a couple references to like obi-wan and and other like original characters but i do like that this is a pretty independent story it's following uh new characters uh and like, new new planets and new concepts yeah mm-hmm. are you enjoying the yes. combat in it uh, combat's not bad. It feels a lot like um, I would compare it like to the uh, the Batman Arkham games. Like it's not overly complicated, but it's um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But so far, it is pretty simple. And then um, what is nice is that you do learn um, like the without going into like any spoilers or anything. The main character is rebuilding his relationship with the force so you do get to learn more um more force moves and how to use the force so i've already learned a couple um Uh so it is nice that it it is dynamic in that sense and now uh, you're expanding your abilities uh your combat abilities over time and it is a nice balance also with the the puzzle aspect as well as the combat Mm -hmm. yeah how far into it are you um i i had uh, what the name of the planet um that first planet that you land on that you're like oh you got to go seek the the master and then it's and then you get introduced to the little robot uh the little droid companion oh. um so i did yeah, that like the and then i planet thing yeah yeah um so i just did all of that and then and then now we're was told to go to um the next place gotcha okay I wish I had names for you it's to be more specific. <laughs> I, all I can remember is that at some point Kashyyyk is in there and that's I'm pretty sure that's where I stopped playing the game. But that's mm-hmm. I think that's a planet or two beyond where you are. Remember Dathomir? I think Dathomir was where I yes, stopped. Yes, I think that's 
Yeah. Because you can go that's... there pretty early, but you don't actually yeah, so go there Yeah, so it gives you two options. Later. It gives you two options, but I just looked up a little bit of information because I got stuck at one point, and people are like, do not go to Dathomir. You are not ready to go. Uh, go to the other planet instead and, like, mm-hmm. you know, get stronger first. Yeah. Bulk up. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I've tried it twice. I made it really far the second time, but I don't. Uh, it, Godspeed and good luck, Karen. And I hope all your dreams come true. And I would like to let you know that one thing you have said about that game is entirely false. And uh, Why? I'm excited for you to discover it because uh, it's going to be great. Uh, tell us if okay. I can't spoil. I don't. I can't tell you. But that's uh, fine. I just um. I, I do want to say it's funny because Will, you and I have the exact same reaction to that game, which is we don't think the game is bad. We don't hate the game. It's just that game does not grab us. Period. <laughs> and I had the same thing with the sequel where I played it. I think I played the first one for like four or five hours. I played the sequel for like two hours, and I was just like, "There's nothing like horribly wrong with this game, and I should like it." And I don't. And I just kind of walk away befuddled where I'm like, I don't know. What's what's is it me? Is it the game? I don't know what it is, but this ain't just ain't doing yeah. it for me. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know I'm what not, it is. I'm not crazy. Like, I I don't even know how many hours I, I've maybe spent no more like four to six hours in the game. Like, I'm not terribly mm-hmm. into it. Um, But like, I'm like. So far, if I had to rate it, I'll be like, yeah, it's a six out of ten. You know, like it's fun. It's it's yeah. It's not like I don't want to give up on it because I'm disinterested, but I'm also like, this is not going to be on like a list of my top ten, you know, favorite games, probably yeah, of all yeah. time. And I and I totally agree with that. It's just there's a lot of people who would put it on their top ten, who would put both of them on their top oh, really? ten for their perspective years, and I'm like, really. Because I think you're right. It's just like a solid ass seven. You know, it's just like it's a game. It's doing some things good, doing some things. OK, it's just a game. I just don't get the enthusiasm people have for it. It's a f- yeah. it's man, it's the best game ever made. And the fact that you just don't get it. Uh, you know what the thing is, think, though? What? What is the thing? I've I've never heard anybody say that, though. That even the people that love this game can't muster that much enthusiasm <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah. I was just stalling anyways. I I wanted to look up. I have 14 hours in that game on the Xbox. So I think so I made a decent by two. Way. Uh <laughs> divided by no, I mean, by two. you said you tried it twice. <laughs> I know, but I also I don't think I played it on the Xbox the first time. I think it was PS4, maybe. Uh, PS2 actually. I are you gonna PS2 play version. um are you gonna play what is it, Jedi Survivor? The sequel from this year? Absolutely not. I bought it. I paid forty dollars for it and I tried it and I I stopped after a couple hours. I also didn't buy Wonder or Engage or any of the ones outside of the like (laughs) fifteen. Those are both really good though. Those are both really good. But I don't think they're making it in there. I don't know. (sighs) We'll see. Well, now that we're pulling anyways, doesn't matter. Um I'm gonna go next because my show and i like to you skipped uh you skipped a game there you oh sorry karen shit. sorry carrie sorry sorry yeah, carrie. Thank carrie. You. you know have i you didn't carry that's her carrie. name have excuse you met me like a domestic, it's like a domestic um, abuse situation i have to like you know, get between you two and stand up for karen <clears throat> like will let give her space okay let her speak so anyways i've been so, playing dead so <laughs> i well now now um i didn't i didn't add pentiment on there but i did play pentiment right before playing jedi fallen order um but uh i know that all i believe all of you guys had played it right all yeah, of yeah, yeah. Played it. and it was our game um, of the year last year yeah so i'm not gonna go super into it because i'm sure if somebody wants to hear more about pentiment they can go back to several episodes and listen to you guys talk about it um i liked it i i wasn't you know controversially i'm gonna say i wasn't super into it that that i would also maybe rate like well maybe a little higher like an eight out of ten i i think visually um beautiful game um very uh unique and neat like you know all the the character text popping up and um you know different nobility different uh classes you know having the text type out differently um and so on um but in the end I mean, I don't know if I can really be spoiler or not, but 
essentially it's i been, felt like it's been more than a year so yeah it felt like the game was supposed to be almost like a butterfly effect like the the choice you're put in several situations where you have two choices to make and yeah, then, you know yeah. then there's consequences and then in the end it kind of felt like oh well none of that really mattered because it all kind of led to the same ending yeah. so yeah you know I, that game is like it's it's one of those games where i wouldn't call it a seven out of ten it's i think i would agree with you like it's an eight or nine out of ten but it's not a flat because it's like stories fantastic gameplay non-existent like like art fantastic like player involvement and choice not there you know so it's one of those things where in the end it balances out high but there's definitely highs and lows i think it's also barely a video game you know yes but 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 the story was so compelling that at least for me and a lot of people we were just like it's okay that it's barely a video game because the story and the characters and how this is like rolling itself out is so incredibly well done that I'm enthralled and I'm going to sit here for hours just pressing the A button to see the next dialogue line because it's so well written. Yeah. Right. So it's definitely and, it's a game of ups and downs. Yeah, for sure. And and I, I don't mean this like in an offensive way. It just felt like the best version of those yes. like shitty like art, you know, it's like a um, novel. Yeah. yeah, the visual novels are like the um like the the rpgs Hentai you know where, where it's yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it felt like the best version that those could possibly Stripper. ever be yes uh, yeah 100 percent. yeah i totally agree with you there yeah it's funny i i hadn't thought about it the way you said it you know with the scale but it's the same thing with venba from last year like that story's yeah. great it hits its emotional beats really well the gameplay the the topic of the gameplay, cooking those foods, trying to read the recipes, trying to figure it out is really cool. But the gameplay and the amount of it in that, it just doesn't satisfy you. Like you finish the game, yeah. you're like, I just want to cook like 20 more dishes. Like, give it to me. But, yeah. yeah, it's it's not satisfying. Like you finish the game, but you never finish. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I just want to point out that we all... The, that cool pentiment thing where you can like click on the words and it tells you what they mean. Like we all <laughs> knew oh. that was in the game and it's cool that we all knew that. I it? use that so much. I Me too, in all it? the time. Yeah. So the crazy thing is, okay, this, this is gonna sound like a brag, but it's really not. I knew that was in there. I did not click words a majority of the time because half the time I knew what they already were and the other half of the time I was like, I have enough context to basically understand what that is and I can keep going through it. Yeah, I saw I did that too, Ian. It was a choice and I did <laughs> yeah. that. It's a choice to never click any word. Yeah. yeah it, oh, God, I'm still mad great, about that. Great game. Great Fantastic game, game Pendiment. Sucks. Piece of shit. Um, folks, I've been playing video games. Uh, this, You know, I didn't touch on it last week because I thought I'd be playing more of it. And I bought all the DLC. But I I, I picked up the another game. But Dead Cells, I did start playing. And it's really good. And it feels really good. Hell yeah. And I've been playing through the Castlevania levels. And mm. the, that I bought mm -hmm. those. And the soundtrack is really good there. And it just like feels like a Castlevania game. Like the first time you get to the castle, you have to go open the drawbridge and then it's just open subsequent runs. And then you like, yeah. you like, uh, it's just, it's really cool and it's great. And I, I really like the way, like, I'm not, it's funny coming from a rogue like guy. Um, I'm not that crazy about run based games. Uh, I, I, a run based games when I want a good story because sometimes I'm afraid that it'll get way too lost and I'm not saying like that's here in Dead Cells because there's not that much of a story but the amount they put in feels like the right amount for a run based game where it's just like some mysterious stuff and then with the Castlevania stuff it's like adding on to itself um, so it feels like uh -huh. I'm not necessarily I'm not going through so many runs that I miss out on story or miss a part because uh, I feel like I died and I can't get back there, you know? Um, yeah. So I think it does work out quite well here. And it'll make me give other story-based, run-based story games uh, kind of a second second shot there. But How, how is the, how is the, how is the Castlevania implemented? Like, in terms of, do you choose to go into those at the start of a run? Or is it halfway through a run, you go down that path? It's like that first area where you go to, like, the toxic sewers or the ramp, ramparts. There's yep. also 
the um, oh, castle. Okay, gotcha. So you like go to the castle, it sends you to the outskirts, and then all the levels in the castle are like you choose the right door to get out and all gotcha. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Have you, it, it is have very you, well done. Yeah. Have you beaten the game yet? I have not. Have I don't you had know a successful how, run. No, I don't know how to do that. I don't. I don't even know what's required. Um, I mean, you just you just keep going, and then there's a boss at the end. So the furthest I probably put like twenty twenty five hours into that game. It's very very good. The farthest I got though was I got like halfway through the final area, but I did not get to the final boss. But yeah, it just feels so good. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It, it, it's something about it. Like I was expecting enemies to take like more hits but you because i had played a little bit of blasphemous and that's like a parry sort of stuff and everything mm -hmm. and, and blasphemous is great but i was just expecting more of that and it's not it's just like drop down crush the guys hit them in the face get all your cool upgrades yeah. and shoot things like it's fun it's good feels good it, it one of the best feeling games i played oh, in a yeah, long yeah. time you just feel great yeah um Origami King by Paper Mario. Pick that back up. Uh, I'm uh, three streamers down. I think there's five streamers uh, to unlock the uh, Peach's Castle. It's the whole plot line. Mm -hmm. But there are th essentially five worlds. Um, I still think that writing in that game is so stellar. It's, I don't, like, I don't, it, I don't know how I missed out on if writing in Nintendo games is always like that. But just the like existential dread I talked about with like the toads and being like, I wanted to be mm -hmm. a I wanted to be a butterfly forever. Um, just like that type of comedy is all over it. And it's still funny even now. Um, even to the fact where they're like the ancient being of Captian to Ode and you're like trying to find him and it's just like really stupid stuff and i really like there's it there's a lot of there's a lot of good jokes and yeah um like nods and references and yeah so actually now that you pointed out it's it's uh because uh, i played i played it before you picked it up um i played it last year and it's not my favorite um paper mario game um the I mean, they, they, the biggest change that they make is, um, aside from like the style is like the combat, it seems, uh, with every game, but I do agree with you in that the writing and the story of this game is probably the best in the series. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of, lots of humor and lots of like very nuanced adult tinged humor, you know, yeah. it's not just kitty cute. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was genuinely surprised by that. Um, it does have the worst combat system in any game I've ever played in my entire life. I hate it so much. I hate it, hate it so much. It is it is Ow. a nightmare. And I like yeah. puzzle games. It's the worst. And I hate it. I hate it. I just, why is it this way? <laughs> Please, God. Um, yeah. Uh, the bosses, even the uh, bosses piss me off. It's the worst. You have to do like this whole trail thing and then half the time it doesn't work. And it's just... I did figure out that if you pay the toads, they show you the route you're going to take. So now I just pay the toads because they're freaks anyways. <laughs> they solve um, it for you. Yeah, it's just, uh -huh. oh, it's an utter nightmare. I hate it. But other than that, uh, it's going great and it's fun. And I'm just going to beat it because I, I, I'm this far. You know, I might as well. The Nintendo Switch doesn't get much love uh, since Tears of the Kingdom. So might as well embrace it. Uh, and then finally, folks, I have defeated Detroit. I took a gun and I shot it. And Robocop has defeated Detroit. We elected a mayor, I think, was the end of the story. And we're going to clean up Detroit and do things. Who did you vote for? I voted for Cusack, I think, or Mills. I don't remember which one. But I finished that game. It is uh, a crazy, weird uh, homage, perfect, not homage, perfect regeneration of robocop distilled from the movies it feels good plays well um it's a little bit janky it looks gorgeous uh and not so much in movement as much as standing still <laughs> it looks gorgeous yeah. uh the taa is rough in that game uh but other than that uh it's fun i highly recommend if you can get it on like a sale for like even 15 bucks 20 bucks i would recommend playing it if you like robocop uh, it's just a neat thing. I got a RoboCop action figure, uh, who's so cute, Ooh. and I have an Ed oh, 209 coming tomorrow uh, to scale. And then, um, yeah, it's fun. Uh, it was a f I posted that clip of 
bitches come, bitches enter. Is that what it is? He uh, just yells it. Oh yeah, leave. bitches uh, enter. No, no. In the no, game, he does bitches oh. come, bitches uh, and come. they all walk in. They don't. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, they're not orgasming in the video game, Ian. No, no, bitches leave is from the movie. I know they did the reverse. It's funny. Bitches come. It's funny. Uh-huh. Roll reversal. Have you never done it? <laughs> I'm excited to see you play the uh, the Terminator game now that yes. you finished that. I did buy the Terminator game that they made yeah. before it, and then supposedly that's really that game actually did well enough that they have a definitive edition uh, that yeah, I purchased. Yeah. So now Michael that I've Huber seen... at um, at Easy Allies always spoke highly of that. He said it's just like a solid seven, a solid Terminator. See, that's experience. what Robocop is. Yeah. Uh, now that we all know Robo- uh, Terminator is better than Terminator 2, uh, we can uh, we discussed that last week. We can move on. Uh, I haven't seen T3 yet, which I think I think is going to be the best. I'm really excited. Um, I mean, I don't know what the opinion of is it now. It's it's a good Terminator movie. I'm still OK with it. I haven't seen T4. It? I remember not liking, though. Salvation I liked. Is that T4? Is that the one? with? Yes. Uh, Yes. Bale. That's the fourth one. Yeah, Christian Bale's the fourth one. Fifth one has Daenerys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen the fifth one. Fourth one, I was like, eh. Fourth one was the I first Terminator I saw, so I thought it was pretty banger. I think I saw Salvation. I def- I watched the show. It has Anton Yelchin. I liked it at oh, the time, but maybe it's, maybe it's bad. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and we, we got to see if there's a, a recording somewhere of the T2 3D live act, the, the show that was at Universal oh or whatever. Oh, yeah, because it's part oh, of the geez. canon. <laughs> yeah. Do, we have to get all of the canon now. We have to go back, Kate. Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah, jeez. Oh, I do not want to watch any of that. Any of that. <laughs> any of that. Ian Gibson, tell me about the games you've been playing. Yeah, folks, I've been playing some video games. Uh, first up is a game that came out earlier this year. I've been thinking about it a lot lately as we head into Goaty season. Um, and honestly, it's turned into a bit of a comfort game for me. Uh, so, Will, you've played BattleBit Remastered, right? Yes, came out last year. Mm, thank you for saying yes to the audio listeners. <laughs> uh, Karen, have you played BattleBit Remastered? I have not, but I've probably seen Will play it. I feel like you should. I feel like I feel like you would like it. Um, It's basically Battlefield, but super low poly, which is fantastic because it runs on it. It kind of has two things. One is that it runs on anything. So a lot of people can play this game. Well, actually, there's three things. One, it runs on anything. So a lot of people can play this game. Number two, it makes the visuals very simple. So you're draw distance is enormous like i was i i think the farthest sniper shot i've gotten is like 700 meters because you can literally look out and see people running on the other side of the map like they're all there because it's not it's not complicated visuals so the enemy pops out very clearly against the terrain etc so it makes it like very easy to play well easy easy to visually distinguish things in the game it's not like we've talked recently about how graphics and games nowadays are so high fidelity that if somebody is standing in front of a building you won't see them because there's too much fucking detail on the building right and it's like bricks you got windows you got rays of light going you got trash gutter and then there's somebody standing there whereas like battle bits like nah man it's just like a real ugly ass one color building and then there's a guy standing in front of it so it's great and the other thing is it allows this game to go up to 254 players in a single match so it's 127 versus 127 and it's it's beautiful um and and so we've talked about it before it's just like it's it's like battlefield but they've made a lot of changes recently where they basically just added a lot of guns added a lot of attachments attachments on top of attachments so like i was using a gun earlier today where i had a i had a 4x zoom as my main scope and then I had a, I had a holo dot one X on top of it. So if I went close quarters, I could switch to the second scope instead of like zooming in too far. Oh, and nice. it, I'm just constantly getting unlocks. The community's great. It has proximity voice chat. So people are talking to each other. And it's just like, like I did it like two times today where I was like, oh, I got 30 minutes. What should I do? And I'm like, let me just listen to a podcast and play battle bit. 
it's just like a perfect little comfort game. You guys have any like 30 minute piecemeal comfort games like that you've been leaning on? <laughs> um, yes, actually. It will staring at me all confused. Um, our our go to like we've got a little oh. downtime where we don't know what to play together uh -huh. is uh Wheel of Fortune. Oh, gotcha. We play so much fucking Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> we really do. It got to the point where I learned that if you go to the main menu and you sign out and it kicks you back to the main menu, the main menu song just repeats on top of itself. So I got it to like nice. 10 of it deep. And it was <laughs> the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. It was an absolute nightmare. That makes sense because I feel like you tried to get us to play that and Jeopardy and one other game during Extra Life and it just never panned out. So I know you it's guys are, are like, creeps for those trivia video game shows. Yeah, it's just so shitty. It's, and we turned it's off it's fake shitty, Pat Sajak's still, voice. It's still good. It's not like the. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's the really like crappy version of Jeopardy that like tries to do voice recognition but totally fails. Yeah. And then there was another version of Jeopardy that um, was multiple choice. Oh yeah. So we were trying to find something. So this is like the most decent game show gotcha. video game. Oh, it gotcha. also does that. You know that thing where sound, if sound, like a sound sample, is on top of itself too much, it does that like, bang, 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 like at the end of it. Yeah. That is the cl yeah. every clap sound in the game is that because yeah. they're Beautiful. all the same exact one on top of each other. So it's just like wow, 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 and then abruptly <laughs> stop. Incredible. It's. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. it's a nightmare. So anyways, uh, BattleBit, it's a fantastic game. It goes on sale frequently. If you're into Battlefield or Call of Duty or FPS games, totally give it a shot. Um, even like it's been out for almost a year now. And pretty much any time I hop on, there's at least four full servers, which means there's a thousand people playing that game. And during, oh, wow. you know, during the evenings, during weekends, it's even more than that. It's always a good, good, good time. Um other game I wanted to mention just real quickly, we talked about it previously, Tribes 3. Uh, there was a news story a couple weeks ago saying Tribes 3 is coming back and they were going to have play tests soon. Uh, I got into one of the play tests this past weekend and uh, just wanted to say, folks, it's Tribes. It's fantastic. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Tribes, it's kind of an old school multiplayer FPS um, capture the flag. But what it does really uniquely is you have different classes. So you have like a light, medium, heavy class. Um, and that depends on where you're carrying your weapons. It also has skiing. And the thing about skiing is basically if you're going down a slope and you hold down the space bar, you will slide down the scope, the slope and gain speed. And then it also has a jetpack, which takes you up hills. So what they call skiing is basically if you do it right, you slide down a hill and you get up to like 150 kilometers per hour. Then you jetpack up the top hill, top of the next hill to uh, keep your momentum and you go down the next hill and all of a sudden you're rocketing across the map at like 200 kilometers per hour. And then the flags are always kind of in the open. So you're just like trying to line up the flag exactly. So you can just like whip through and grab the flag. Um, and then that's where the classes come in. Cause if you're a heavy, if you will see somebody coming for the flag, you can literally just stand in their way and they will hit you and stop <laughs> instead of pushing you out of the way. <laughs> And so you can literally just be like a heavy on the flag and be like, like bodyguard it and stop them dead and then kill them. Um, yeah. So it's tribes. Uh, I just signed up and got into the play test like immediately. So if anybody's interested in tribes, uh, totally go to Steam and sign up for that tribes three play test. I'm excited to see this game. I'm a little worried because they need to start building the community now because that game is going to live or die based on how many people are playing it. But folks, tribes, tribes is back. It's great. Um, tribes is back. Yeah, they, the other one I've, they did. <laughs> uh, the other game that I've played is a game that you played. Will, you've played the System Shock remake, right? Yeah, I have. What did you think of it? I think it's great. I love it. It makes me uh, it's way better than the original. If you've tried to play the original. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tried to play the original a couple years ago and it's tough. The original is basically this is a terrible way to describe it, but the original is basically Deus Ex, the original, in terms of like, it's got that UI where there's just like a shitload of boxes and, and, and buttons and stuff. And it's got like, it's got decent graphics, but they're not going to hold your hand. They expect you to have a manual nearby and they're not really going to explain things to you, but there's a lot to click on and a lot of actions you can do. Um, what I really like about this remake is that 
like you said, it's it's easier to get into because it just controls better. It feels better. They've redone the UI and the UX a little bit. Also, the graphics. Did you notice the graphics are so good because they have. It looks good. It has modern lighting, etc. But all the textures are like are like 4K pixel art. Did you notice that? Yeah, it, it's, it's it's really good. Fantastic. Did you do the uh, yeah. have you used the Berserk yet? Yeah, I, I, I think I did once. Yeah. Did you see this? It shows the sprites of the original enemies when you use it. Oh, it. Oh, I didn't notice that. It scared the shit out of me because I used it in an empty room. I, it might it might not be the Berserk. It might be one of the other ones, but it shows the sprites of the original uh, mutated mm-hmm. guys when you use it. Yeah, it's 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 just really it's really good. And it's weird to play it now. It's kind of like watching Citizen Kane, right? Like, have you guys have you guys seen Citizen Kane? No, no. You've seen Citizen. It's it's still good. It's still very good. So the thing, the problem with watching Citizen Kane nowadays is you watch Citizen Kane and you go, yeah, it's a good movie. I don't know why people were like losing their shit over it, right? But you forget that in the context, Citizen Kane has like quick shots. It has like dynamic camera movement. It has like like time switches and time jumps, etc. That's commonplace in movies nowadays, right? But back then when it came out none of that shit was happening. So it was like, I'm watching this shit for the first time. And that's kind of the context you have to have for it. And with system shock, thinking about Bioshock, thinking about prey, thinking about any fucking game that is, uh, fuck, what's the genre they call it nowadays? Immersive Sims. Immersive Sim where mm-hmm. it's like, I'm going to go around to space. I'm going to pick up audio logs. I'm going to log into their computer. I'm going to read, uh, signs on the wall. I'm going to try and figure out what happened here. I'm going to have a huge map and I can go through different ways and I got to get this over here and a little bit of Metroidvania, etc. I'm not going to say all of that came from System Shock, but a large part of it came from System Shock, especially the whole like you're on a space station spaceship and it's abandoned and there's bodies everywhere and enemies and you got to figure out what happened here. And so mm-hmm. it doesn't hit as heavy as I'm sure it did in the 90s but it still is very, very well done for being in that genre. I mean, it, it, am I wrong, Will? It feels like it still hits really well. It's still very effective. Oh, for sure. I, I love system or I love immersive Sims. So like, yeah, the original system shock again was a DOS game. So it, I don't even think it was full 3d. It was thing was sprite based. And then the, it was like doom 3d. Um, oh yeah, maybe I'm thinking of System Shock Two. Then. You might be thinking of System Shock Two because System Shock Two is more like Deus Ex. Um, so which is I think why it's I still think, a valid yeah, point that, that you make, though. No, 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 it's still valid. Yeah. For sure, valid point. Um, System Shock Two, I played during the pandemic. One of the best games I've ever played in my life. Deus Ex, I've uh-huh. been playing through. I need to go back to and finish it. I stopped, I think, for Baldur's Gate, uh, or actually, it might have been Starfield. Ugh. Um, but, uh, oh. yeah, I, I, I agree. It, it's, uh, system shocks, like the birth of the four, five, one code that every game uses, um, yeah. oh, oh, four, five, one, uh, and, and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, they're neat. I think it's a, it's a genre that's hard to define now that a lot of games have interactable objects, but you can kind uh-huh. of, it's kind of one of those things, you know, when you see it, like prey, uh 2017 yeah. and stuff like that you're sci-fi just like, you're like, sci-fi immersive sim yeah yeah exactly so um yeah it's i'm, I'm glad you're liking it because it's 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 following the same formula as two um with like the deck clearing but it's again uh-huh. that art style it's just the the lighting with that art style is is fantastic yeah i do i do have one big complaint with it though which is that i feel like they should have i'm assuming updated refreshed enhanced the enemy ai because there are different enemy types but it feels like it's just like oh this guy's gonna shoot me this guy's tiny this guy's gonna do a little bit more damage but they're all kind of dumb enemies and i wish they had done more there for the remake um because it is a little bit like i was thinking about like oh i'm gonna get more guns i'm gonna see more areas i'm gonna do more cyberspace stuff and then i'm like I'm going to get more enemies and I'm like, they're probably just going to keep being dumb guys. You know, they're just going to be slightly they're going to look different. They're going to move different, but they're still going to be dumb. I wish they'd done more there. Yeah, I will say it. it, I wasn't expecting it to have this, but there was just like a straight up level I was on that. I was just like, can I crouch jump into that? And I crouch jumped into it and it was a whole like service corridor and stuff to like get around the level. And I was like, 
oh, I like this unlocks a whole new thing in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Shortcut. Yeah, yeah. Um, the last game I've been playing, just want to shout it out. So we have a new series we've started called Speedrunners. We've got episode three coming up on Tuesday where I have started speed running the game Untitled Goose Game. And I am starting to I will. Can I call myself a speed runner now? I think I, I can. I hate that. I have to say this, but I think <laughs> you can. Yeah, it's weird because like I, I I don't know. Have you guys ever watched like Games Done Quick, Awesome Games Done Quick, Summer Games Done Quick, that whole speed run thing? I, I usually don't only because I don't want games spoiled because it's always like a game that I haven't played or something. But I think, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's the problem. It's like a lot of the times it's like I really want to watch this speed run, but I haven't played this game. So I want to play the game. Yeah. That's such a shitty excuse, though, because they're playing like Pokemon Snap. They're playing like Mega Man 3. And it's, it's oh, really? I'm, not, I'm not watching I, those yeah. ones. I would, I would watch Just that. I would watch schedule. Pokemon yeah. speed run. No, the, the, I've, the other I've day they had, a, they had a they had a dog do a speed run. Like, yeah, peanut like butter. the guy had trained his dog to press a button that, and and they timed that. To so the, the dog didn't Anyways. do it. The man's ingeniousness did it. Uh, anyway, so it's kind of wild. Like I'm I'm starting to get in touch with the. I would say in tune with the speedrun community where it's like, okay, I got to like do this corner this way. I got to actually practice these glitches. And it's funny because I never beat Untitled Goose Game. I dropped it like halfway through because I wasn't really enjoying it. But now I am like, I don't want to say I know everything about the game, but I know so much about how to break this game in the most optimal, efficient way possible. And it's rare for me. I don't think I've ever practiced a game before. Where like before the stream, I literally sat down. And I was like, I've got 40 minutes. I already played enough battle bit today. So let me sit down. And I literally booted up the game and I practiced clips over and over again. C clips as in like, OK, I'm going to have the boot here and I'm going to go through the fence and that's going to skip this part. OK, let me reset, redo it, reset, redo it. I, I, I don't know. Have you guys ever had that relationship with a game where you like know the game in and out enough to break it and or feel like you need to like practice the game offline for some other reason? Well, it's. It's interesting that um, what's interesting about this game, and I don't know if this is why you chose to speedrun this game, is that it's very linear. In order to beat the game, you just have to do this one thing and complete it, and then you've yeah. beaten the game. You know, it's not about how many points you get or kills or anything like that. It's like just do this one thing. So you picked a game that you can speedrun. Um, that's, that's like the ideal game to speedrun is how quickly can I do the thing and beat the game? Whereas other games, it's like, like people speed, speed run Mario or they speed run Pokemon. It's like, yeah, it's interesting that you're still, it's still interesting that people are finding ways to exploit and break the game. But like, I mean, is, is that the end goal? No, there's a few different goals throughout the game you know get a get a higher score you know get yeah. get you know collect things and so on yeah yeah what about you will you ever you ever played a game like that uh no i mean i i've i i tend to break games at least i did when i was a kid when i played them so like we played so much like midtown madness and stuff that we would just like figure out the bugs or um <clears throat> the big one is like delta halo in halo 2 like i can get outside the map and walk around the mountains like within the first five minutes you just gotta jump up a certain area and like i remember doing that and that was just like us sitting for like three hours in co-op being like hey can you jump off this rock and land up there uh -huh. and being like oh i think i can and then we did and we're like shit what do we do now <laughs> like let's just keep yeah. walking so yeah the stuff like that but i've other than like practicing bosses that i'm trying to get past um mm -hmm. there's nothing that i'm like attaining a, a, a practical skill for you know yeah yeah it's just it's weird because i want to say the only other game that i've done this for and this is a cop out is uh elder scrolls online and that's because it was literally my job as a qa tester to constantly push the boundaries and fuck with the game not because mm -hmm. i was sitting there 40 hours a week trying to glitch break it but it's like OK, I'm testing this quest today and it's like, OK, I'm going to do the happy path. And then I'm going to say, what if I do it out of order? What if I go talk to this person first, last, et cetera? And then there's always art passes, which is literally just like walk around this room, try and get out of the room. Look at every object. Is it floating? Is it clipping? Is it touching correctly, et cetera? And 
that's the only other time I've gotten this intimate with a game, but with Untitled Goose Game, like like one of the clips we've been talking about is like you have to like study. You have to study the goose as it's holding the bell and it's slowly turning and you can see a subtle yeah. difference in the turn animation. And then you can see him crane his neck and it's just like, OK, when he starts to turn this way and the neck cranes, that's when you do this. And then you're on top of the invisible collision, etc. And it's it's kind of satisfying. Like, I'm not going to be speed running a lot of games for now on, but it feels really good to have a personal best now of six minutes, 38 seconds. And I I have a speed run like I'm not going to hit number one. Our goal is to hit top 100 by the end of the series. But folks, I am I'm on the way, which is fucking crazy. It's wild. It it really was. I mean, I, I know I watched the stream and I know Will was kind of um, at first saying how impressed he was and was kind of joking mm-hmm. about it. But it it was genuinely impressive watching some like watching somebody who's not a speedrunner like speed run a game and like just yeah. realizing like oh like it's it it does like yes it if you want to um you know get in the top 10 of course you're gonna have to spend you know dozens uh-huh. if not hundreds of hours practicing but even just watching like you watch you can watch a, a few videos and i think you even said you spent like two hours studying videos and were yeah. like immediately like going and like banging out like clipping through yeah um but it was wild to watch yeah it's pretty fun it's pretty fun if 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 anybody out there watching and listening is interested in speed running i would totally say pick a game look up the speed run community try it out untitled goose game honestly it's a great way to start uh karen you were talking about why we picked it and the big thing was uh, we had a list of like 25 games that we could potentially speed run um and Untitled Goose Game popped up because it was on some article about like, hey, here's good beginner speedrun games. And when I looked at it, the world record is two minutes and five seconds or four seconds, which tells me if we were world record pace, which I'm not expecting us to be, we could get so many runs in back to back to back to back. Right. I, I don't want a game where the world record is 30 minutes because even world record pace, that means two runs per stream. And that's just that's not fast enough. Right. That's not good entertainment. The other thing was top 100 number 100 was three minutes and 50 seconds so that means there's a minute and 50 seconds between number one and number 100 and it felt like that that was a really good goal for me to be like i can squeeze in there right i'm not fighting for milliseconds to get into the top 100 i've got plenty of wiggle room in there that's something attainable for me and there's only six or seven clips total that i need to practice so it just felt like a great beginner speed run game so if anybody's interested in speed running and you're not sure what game to start out with. Untitled Goose Game, honestly, it's a great it's a great starting point. It's a great learning point. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> those are the games we've been playing this week, uh, folks. If you'd like to see any of those, uh, you can't. Rewind. Uh, next up, we've got the news here. Ian Gibson. Uh, we have collected the news this week. Uh, is I... there uh, any, any big stuff we got to hit before we get out of here today? Well, I put this in order. Is there a time limit y'all have for this evening? No, no, I don't. I just didn't know if like there was no. stuff you really wanted to get to, if you want to get to it. Just you, you do you. Well, did y'all happen to see the Xbox developer direct? I did for work. No, I did not. I, I did because I stopped working when this came on. Uh, not because I cared about this as much, but... Um, a little behind the scenes, it's Thursday, 3 p.m. I hit 45 hours on the clock for this week. And I was like, boss, not coming in tomorrow and I'm done working. And he was like, OK, <laughs> so I just I just like turned the computer off and I watched this. Um, there's a couple things going on in here. Let me uh, I, I don't remember the fucking order. So let's just go through this. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle officially revealed official hot take courtesy of Will. Bill Spencer liked my tweet. Oh, your tweet or GameSpot's tweet? It was GameSpot's tweet, but he was the first person to doesn't like it. Fucking, doesn't fucking. It was the video was the I made. He doesn't like all our oh, tweets. Oh, I can't wait to suck off Indy in our great circle jerk. I just watched the the video because it came up. It was I did a comparison feed. for the game to Not the movies. Not because I wanted to. Oh, Phil Spencer okay, liked it. okay. Um, I think it looks. Um, how you feeling? How you feeling? I, I'm feeling pretty good. I. I a huge Indiana Jones fan. Uh, the three movies they made are great. 
Uh, and I'm glad they made them. <laughs> have you seen? Wait, have you seen the new one yet? Because the haven't. new one's out on Disney Plus now, and I, 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 I can't, I can't wait to see it. I, have I you can't. seen? Have you seen the fourth I've one seen recently? It. The fourth one's bad. Have you seen it yeah. recently though? I in recent no. enough. I saw it when it came out. I think I saw it in theaters. Yeah, I, I've seen it both recent and when it came out. Maggie and I watched all four recently in preparation for the fifth one, just because why not? And I got to be honest with you, the fourth one is not as terrible as people act like it is because it's it's probably the worst of the four, but two and maybe even three aren't as great as everybody acts like they are. And two and so three it's, great. it's just like. Th- these it are brings not real it ratings. down. It bring the other two down, so it brings this one up. I, I I no, I think it's like I think it's like eight, six, seven, six. Like those aren't official ratings, but it's like eight out of ten, six out of ten, seven out of ten, six out of ten. Like it's it, it, people are acting like it's a two out of ten, and the rest of the series is amazing. And I'm like, it's really not that bad, folks. Like I think you're forgetting about the rest of the series. So I'm excited to see the new one to see how it is. Anyways, sorry, small tangent. Um, no, I'm excited for it. It looks fun. I think the choice to go first person was interesting um yeah it, yeah it, it, it the whip thing looked a little funny but it also looked r- really fun to do yes yes um, i think the game overall looks funny but yeah. fun and, and the harrison ford impersonator who i was told was troy baker i don't f- i they said that but I, I I it was pretty decent if it is Troy Baker. It's pretty good. decent. It was good. Like it had some good Harrison Ford inflection. The character model looked like yeah. Harrison Ford. Brody looked like Brody. Um the like solving it the puzzles and optional puzzles and stuff seemed really neat. Uh and I think yeah. kind of kind of diving into like Indiana Jones uh like as a video first person video game uh where you like have to see everything from that perspective is uh is yeah. interesting and it, and it looked fun. The story sounded cool. A, a title's not great. It's not my favorite. It's okay. But I thought Will was joking the first time he told me that that's what it's called. The title. What did you say? Yep. Did you? Or uh, Ian said the Great Circle. Who said the butthole thing? Jerk. Oh no, that was somebody on on our Discord, I believe. Oh, Jake. I'm pretty sure Jake said it. I think Jake said. It. He yeah, said never I, show I, off I, your I Great Circle with... for free. This looks like it's going to be so for the first person thing, I think somebody on Twitter had a really good take. I wish I could remember who it was, but they basically said, hey, they probably deliberately went with first person. This is pure conjecture, but they probably deliberately went with first person for a majority of the game, because if they went with third person, it would just be an immediate comparison to Uncharted and they're just not going to win that fight. Right. So by making it first person, it gives them a little bit of breathing room in that direct comparison. Um, I think this is going to be a solid seven out of 10, possibly an eight out of 10, just based on what I've seen. And I think that's fine. I don't think it's going to be better than that, but I don't think it's going to be worse than that. And it's going to be on game pass. So sure. I'll, I'll play it for free 99. You know, what, what about you, Karen? What do you think? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree. I mean, it's a good point. Also, uh, what you said about uncharted, um, because I, I mean, I'd only played the fourth one, but that even that like didn't super grab me. So I feel like if this was, um, this had the has the potential to feel all like very similar and and like an Uncharted clone. Um, so with a with a franchise like this, like you can only kind of hope for the best, but yeah. also not set your expectations too high. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be bad. And I think that's a winning. That's a no, winning it's just going to be right like, there. OK, like even like with the RoboCop, like, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's people that love the game. But um, like Will said before, like, yeah, like it feels like a RoboCop game. But like, is it, you know, a 10 out of 10? Yeah. No. But, you know, that's probably a good point is I'm totally OK with it not being a 10 out of 10 as long as it feels like indie the same way as robocop's not a mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 but it feels like robocop and from what i've seen it looks like it's going to feel like indiana jones and that's that's great yeah yeah um that's i just wanted to uh just cut in here because i know exactly what that person's saying about uncharted but i would also like to point out that two third person indiana jones games came out before uncharted so no, 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 Fuck. no, 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 no. They're not saying who copied who. They're saying if they were, if Indy was third I know, person. They would be compared to it. They'd be directly compared to each other. But by making it first person, it's harder for, 
for fanboys to jump on that that shit fight. Okay, I agree. Right. Listen, uh, Emperor's Tomb is fantastic. Yeah. Um, moving on from indie, uh, skipping Senua's Saga, uh, going straight to Avowed. Wow. Yo, this game looks real fucking good. Will doesn't it look really fucking good? I the choice. So for those people who don't know, this is Obsidian's, for lack of a better term, Skyrim. It's their version yes. of it. Uh, and instead of doing mm. spells from their hands, they have wands, and it looks so of dope. Um, they have wands, and they have flintlocks and swords and shields. <gasps> but they said, did you catch when they said short wand? So I wonder if there's different types of wands. If there's like a like a two handed wand, almost like a staff. Like they said, short wand and not wand. And so, yeah, look, look, I'm going to if I may lay this out real quick, this may be slightly controversial, but we all know in our hearts this is the truth. One hundred percent. Bethesda has always made interesting, unique games, but not necessarily great games. And now other studios are coming in and saying, what if we make those games, but actually good? And so we had The Outer Worlds which was better. Mm -hmm. We had Fallout New Vegas, which was better. And now we have Avowed, which is better Skyrim. And fuck yes. Give that shit to like a studio that can actually make a great game. And hell yeah, because I was one of those people who I never finished Skyrim. I played it 20, 25 hours and I was like, this is this is this is OK, but I'm falling off here. And I feel like Avowed is an actual delivery on the promise of Skyrim. It just looks better in everything. It looks so it, good. It's crazy how, like, it, I don't know if there's any other, uh, like, in any other industry where there's, like, a company that's, like, known for making, like, this type of product, and then uh -huh. their competitor that's, like, smaller and lesser known, but, like, makes a better version of it, and then it's, like, we're just in that same cycle over and over again. Shit, you're right, because it's usually the opposite, right? It's like you have Kraft Mac and Cheese, and then you have Walmart comes along. And they're like, we're going to make the Walmart brand, right? And it's usually the shittier, cheaper version. But this is the opposite, where it's it's the AAA, AAA name brand that's making the shitty version. And the smaller guys coming along and being like, we can do that better. And they deliver on it. I mean, it's the same with all the Nintendo stuff. It's like better Star Foxes are coming out. Better Pikmin games are coming out. Yes, uh, better... Yep. I, I mean not necessarily better zelda but non main uh main franchise nintendo stuff that they're now trying to capitalize on because they realize other indie studios are doing it better than them and they're like wait we want that money here's pikmin 4 wait here's yep. here's metroid like yeah it's just wild mm -hmm. uh yeah i'm excited for this this looks great and this is also a 2024 game yeah i think everything in the show was 2024 yeah, it was a little weird, though, because they said Avowed is fall 2024. Uh, Hellblade 2 is May 21st, 2024. Indiana Jones is 2024, 2024. which okay. means 2025, folks. Let's yeah. be honest here. They couldn't even, they couldn't even say fall 2025, 2024. So but yeah. still, I mean, we've, we've got a good year for games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Hellblade, Senua, uh, Hellblade 2, Senua Saga. It's coming. The game looks fantastic. It ain't my fucking game, though. So yeah, I know, know, uh, know. y'all enjoy that. Also, or I'm sorry. Or I don't whatever. know why they keep updating us on it. It's the same footage and stuff every single time they update us on that game. I just want to play yeah. it. I loved the first one. I'm excited to play the second one. Just put it. I just don't want I'm, I'm right with you. The only difference is I, I, I just don't want to hear about it anymore. You know, <laughs> like stop taking up time in my directs because I don't care. Um, respectfully. Uh, we also saw Visions of Mana, which is a Square Enix RPG, and apparently they've made 17 of these before. This is the first time the series is coming out on Xbox, and Will, are are we going to have to play a Mana game? Because this looked pretty good. This, this looked good for a JRPG, right? Yeah, it looked good. I mean, uh, wow, way to use a racist term. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um... <laughs> I forgot about that <laughs> well, i forgot who it was it was just like jrpg's racist and then it was like, like that's what? weird and then you and it was like in the early 90s it was kind of racist but not anymore and you're like oh, okay i kind of see where you're coming from yeah uh i think it looks really cool i didn't realize they had shown this off at the game awards and i must have just blocked it out of my mind but and i was curious why it was yeah. here because i was I was working on other stuff while it was going on, and I you just made me realize it's because it's coming to Xbox for the first time. 
Um, yeah, it yeah. looked really fun. There was no turn-based combat or anything. There was just there was a guy just wailing on a green dragon, and I was like, you know what? That's coming to Game Pass. I think I will. I will play that. I don't think they specifically said Game Pass. Oh, I thought it did. That was the thing. Oh, well, I'm not gonna play it. I can, it I can check terrible. it. And I think it looks awful. Yeah, it, it's bad. Yeah, they did not specifically say Game Pass. They just said available on. Yeah, it looks like so, dog shit. Who knows? Uh, speaking of non dog shit, Ara History no. Untold. Uh, speaking of a classic series being possibly done better by other studios, this is basically a new civilization. And it mm. looks pretty good. You guys see this? You guys see this game? It does look pretty good. I like, I like, I like the things in it, and I like the bad names they had to pick because they couldn't use the ones from Civilization. Yes, yes, and I like that the UI looks like it has a little bit more detail in it, which makes me feel like I can get a little more grubby, you know, and in all the hex, little minutia. Was it? it was like blobs. I, th I think it was. I think it was partial hex. I, it was a little weird, um, but yeah, because I. I was not a big fan of Civ 6. Nothing wrong with it. I just think the series is a bit stale. So hell yeah. Give me a new take on the Civ series from ex developers of Firaxis, which mm. made the Civ series. So like I'm excited for this. And this is this is a Game Pass game for this fall. Mm -hmm. So this could be good. It does look I, very good. I um I installed Civilization 5 today after watching it. <laughs> I said, should I play five That's or fair. six? I didn't like six. I'm going to play five. So I installed five. Uh, so I think I'm going to play. We, um, there's a stream series idea floating in the nether for years now, something around Civ. And we did do that one. I did do that one four hour stream where I played Civ five or Civ six with the Trump mod on the US map. And I, I was took there it for over. It, wasn't I? Yeah, it was like a four or five hour stream. We should play so there's Civ. There's a series idea some somewhere. Civ. I'm just worried that if we do Civ. There's a very high chance of racism in that stream. <laughs> For <Right>? you. <laughs> because in my head, I'm immediately like, oh, let's do it on the world map. And each of us picks a country and we pretend to be that country. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't trust. Can't trust me with that. Can't trust me with that. Uh, we'll just be white countries. <laughs> we'll just be the white countries. South Africa, England. <laughs> ah. It's already started. What a nightmare. Uh, India in the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. Civ's, Civ's fun. It's just, it needs, I've played a lot of Civ. I want something new and this, this looks new. This looks pretty cool. Yeah. I, that new um, Dominions of whatever came out today or the other day. And I uh -huh. thought about buying that um, because that's another Forex games that people like. And I was like, oh D yeah. Dominion six came out. And uh, I didn't buy it. Sorry, I'm taking up time talking about this. Goodbye. Cool. Um, a quick question. I believe you put on here this 2023 year top 20 best selling premium games. Yes. I did. Do you want, want me to talk about it? I mean, not really, because it doesn't include digital sales, right? Or Nintendo sales. It just doesn't include Nintendo digital sales. I think there's some other platform that it doesn't include as well. Uh, the other one that does not include is Xbox and Switch digital sales not included for the carrot ones, but I don't see any carrots on this list in the, at least the top. It's 20. Uh, yeah. I mean, what's the highlights here? Will? Uh, well, the highlight, the biggest thing was Hogwarts Legacy a dethroned Call of Duty. Wow. Um, that is big. Last year. Uh, for the past 15 years, it has been all Call of Duty except for Grand Theft Auto 5 year in 2013 and uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 in 2018. But the rest of those have all been Call of Duty Call of Duty releases. I believe uh, the one of the years was actually the top two were both Call of Duty games. It was the previous yeah, I was, year's I was just game. I was just looking uh, at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 from 2022 is number seven on this list. But it, it kind of makes sense because that usually comes out like what, October, November. So it'll bleed into the next yeah. year a bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, so number two is Modern Warfare 3 uh, and then it's Madden NFL 24 and then Marvel Spider-Man 2. And then it's The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which does not include digital sales. Yeah, that's physical and, only, which and is I think number five without physical. I mean, yeah. number five without digital, which is wild. And also, this is all just U.S. 
uh, to clarify in case people didn't know that. Wow. Well, uh, it's the only one that matters. It's the only yeah. one that matters. We know that. Um, but I would just like to say, Ian, I assume you bought Tears of the Kingdom digitally. Yes, I did, because I streamed okay. it on As release did I. day. Yeah. So I I mean, that could be a wildly higher number. Digital. Yeah, it would probably for sure yeah. be one, but like probably be one by it, yeah. a mile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I, well, yeah, I don't I, know. I don't know one by a mile, because I, I want to say the number is probably twenty million or something, but I think Hogwarts was up at like twenty five or thirty mil. I could see it being three or two. I don't know about number one. But but it is I a one system game, so it's still very impressive. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, that's just wild. Uh, I just wasn't expecting that. I mean, it sucks that uh, it's Hogwarts Legacy that beat the record, but um, you know, uh, you can't win them all, everybody. Uh, so okay, yeah, I'm just I gonna just... fucking say it. Oh, God. Harry Potter's great. J.K. Rowling's awful. Harry Potter's great. Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, J.K. Rowling's a piece of massive dog shit. Yeah. But Harry Potter's great. But Harry Potter's great. And J.K. Rowling yeah. died in a fire. Um, moving on here. Uh, Suicide Squad impressions. Uh, Ian, <laughs> I didn't know this. And I, you know, inhabit. Uh, your best informed opinion is to never read the article and just read the headline. But this headline got me good. I giggled. Um, <laughs> it's so good. So... There was a Suicide Squad Alpha earlier this year. Actually, it may have been late December. And I know that because I participated in it. I installed the game. I never actually played it, but I was in the closed alpha. Um, and I know there was an NDA because I looked at the NDA and I was like, can I stream this? Can I even tell people I have it? And they were like, no, 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 no. You can't do any of that shit. So I never mentioned it to anybody. Otherwise, I would have streamed it or at least talked about my impressions. Well, uh, Suicide Squad was shown to... Uh, reviewers and game outlets a couple weeks ago and they got like 30 minutes plus hands on and there's like 20 minute plus gameplay impressions out there and they're pretty much across the board everybody's saying this game's terrible like the the headlines out of that uh like preview for game outlets was overwhelmingly negative and as a response um the uh <laughs> The Rocksteady has decided to lift the alpha NDA retroactively and say, hey, everybody who played the alpha, you guys can now talk about it. Um, and the underline is basically Rocksteady wants people who played the alpha to talk about how good the game is. And it's just <laughs> like they are losing a PR war before the game is even out there. And I am very worried about this game at this point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy. Um I, I edited some videos. Well, first, this is a completely separate issue, but the, whoever's recording their gameplay from those preview events, uh, which is not our people, it was 150 gigabytes for a 30-minute file. I do not need 800,000 bit rate or 800 bit rate on, on a video of your game, sir or madam. Um, I, th I think I'm okay with that, though. I, I mean, I know you're the professional video editor, and I'm not, but I always prefer to have more and then tailor it down versus the opposite right oh, i know but 150 gigabytes for 30 minutes so it's like overkill gameplay is wild there's not a change there um regardless of that um it's just it's crazy the amount of people who are out here wanting this game to be bad which i don't necessarily want it i don't want this game to be bad but things i've seen I of this game good I, I want to play the first it. Time, this is the first time I've ever been interested in a DC story other than a Batman thing. Like, yeah. I think the story sounds super cool. Uh, like, fighting the justice, like, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's people on both sides, like, defending it out the wazoo. People who haven't both played sides. the game and taking it down. So, yeah, <laughs> to the troops, both sides. <laughs> um, it's just crazy. Like, wait for the game to come out. It's got to be right, terrible, so now, but it, <laughs> So now we need Ian, we need you to play it and review it. Yeah. I may. Hey, what were your alpha I, impressions? I, I actually, I never played it. I, I installed it. It installed okay. <laughs> That's Oh, impression. so good off the, so I can't believe positive. you didn't tell me you were in the alpha. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I didn't tell you because, like, I couldn't do shit with it, right? It's not like I could stream it. It's not like no, I could talk about it I would like to. Anything, I break so. NDAs for you all the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, the thing was, I, I did have extra keys because they wanted you to play what? with your friends. So I had extra alpha keys. 
but it was it, so the problem was they were like, oh, it's a three week alpha, but it was really like three weeks of like two hour windows oh, on weekends. And it was like, that. fuck off with that shit. Yeah. That, but see, like I'm coming. Look, I love to shit on games. I especially love to shit on games that I know nothing about, especially when they haven't even been released yet. Right. That's one of my favorite things to do. It's true. I I want to play this game. I want to enjoy this game. I'm ready for another Rocksteady game. Right. It's been a while since I played one. And I am fighting against all these fucking negative impressions, which are not just like people being like, looks like shit, fix the puddles. It's like, no, like people like games outlets that got impressions early are releasing articles that are just like, this game is not fun. You're seeing screenshots of the UI and it's just like literally like 50 oh, percent yeah. of the screen, like a 100 different elements all over it. It's very annoying looking. So, I, you know, honestly, to your point, Karen, I probably will play. I will buy and play this game uh, because who knows, maybe I will enjoy it, but I I'm getting very worried about this game right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it'll be interesting for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm not worried about folks though, is the until dawn movie based on the video game in the works from PlayStation. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> so my first impression when I saw the, this article, I was like, wait, Until Dawn is already it, basically an interactive movie. Why are you making yeah. a movie? With like yeah. famous and actors based, in it. <laughs> and it's based on yeah. movie tropes. So it's well, like, it's, it's the most it's like, just, news just article play the ever. game. Like, but it's or, also yeah. like, w watch someone play the game. The yeah. point of the game is that you can interact with the tropey movie. Like, even on yes. that, it's part of it. So it's like, why would you yeah. make a movie and the take the fun part of the tropey movie away? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you're just going to have a movie exactly like the genre that the video game was based off of. And there's a million of those movies. So I'm almost yeah. like, I, I understand why they have IP. They think they can turn it into a profit with a movie. But I have zero expectations for this movie, even if it's fantastic, which I highly doubt. It's like, OK, you made a great horror slasher movie. Cool. There's a million of those. Yeah. And it's like, I, I mean, not to hard, exactly what we just said, but the the draw of pretty much every single supermassive game is what if we took one of those tropey movies and you got to make the choices in it and see if you're yeah. as dumb as the people right. in the movies? Like, yeah. I don't want to so watch that. That's their whole shtick. Like, that's yeah. the thing. So and I, you're taking away that element. Yeah, so I did not read this article, but what they re should really do in here is they need to go to Netflix and they need to do the fucking Bandersnatch choose your own yeah. adventure thing. Yeah, that's what they need to do. You fucking idiots. You know, don't make a movie, make an interactive series or whatever with Netflix because they already have the tech to do that. Anyways, yeah. sure, but I mean, at that point, you're just making the game all over again. It's like, why yeah, even bother as as somebody who played the quarry and then didn't like it? I would I, if if you told me I could play that game again or until dawn, same thing. But it was actual live actors and live scenes instead of me having to watch like bad animated video game elements of it. And all I had to do was just watch it and occasionally make it make a decision and not have to like walk around environments. I, I would rather do that. I would rather have it as I would rather have. What's what's the studio's name? Supermassive. Supermassive. I, I would rather Supermassive switch to live action interactive movies than continue to make the games that they are making in their current style. Th that's my personal preference. But for me, I'm like. I, I don't like the games they make because there's not enough interactivity in them versus just give me the movie and I make a decision every five hey, minutes. That's better. Can you guys spend that's hundreds fair. of millions of dollars more to make these movies instead of games? No, no, that's fucked. There's no fucking way. I, I'm sorry. If they are make there, it is much easier to make the movies cheaper than you make the video games. I don't think so. It's 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 so fucking cheap to make movies nowadays. People don't do it because they're idiots, but you can make some cheap ass movies nowadays. I don't they know. totally could. I don't think it would be the same. You I totally love super massive games. They're very good. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it would be different if like they were if if Supermassive was like already shooting mocap scenes and could just change those. I think they are. No, they are. That's not how, no, they they the cast reads the script and then they shoot they shoot separate 
scenes without the people who are in the in the game. But they're doing mocap with people, though. Right, yeah. but the not, the just not the actors. Yes. So th that's my point is like they're already most of the way there, but they have to also do the they have to build the game. They have to do QA for it. They have to do cert for it. They have to do publishing, et cetera. It would be much cheaper for them to just say, fuck it. Let's just do the movies. They'd have to probably not get the triple A talent for it, but they it would be cheaper and easier for them just to make the fucking movies and pair up with Netflix and have it be interactive. I think the interactive part is way better in that it, the fact that you can walk around in 3d environments and stuff is way better than watching that i mean the, the only benefit to that is that it helps you in certain occasions it helps you to make more informed decisions and that's with air quotes because i mean you're yeah. still deciding arbitrarily but at least it gives it kind of sways you towards uh one decision or another but there's also yeah, like scenes fair. where you're shooting things walking like you're doing game activities you're not just like walking to the next point, picking a thing up. Right. Like but I, I mean, I, I also think Ian makes a fair point where it's like you, you, there's like a, a balance, like you don't want something to be too interactive. Um, like he wants just enough interactivity where he is just making the choices, choices and not no, really playing. A game I'm just saying that's there. not what Supermassive is making. I think there's too much to just turn it into a movie. Yeah, yeah, you would definitely lose stuff. Uh, uh, but I think we can all agree on, on an Until Dawn movie makes sense financially, because if you if you make it low budget enough, you can definitely make a profit off it. But in terms of like artistically, narratively, it it doesn't it doesn't make sense. You're just going to make an inferior version of the video game. Mm -hmm. Also, what like how uh, do you choose who dies and lives? And all that you don't like, you don't choose you don't choose it i know happens. how do they choose well it goes back to netflix because the only other thing i can think of is the clue movie where when the clue movie went out in theaters they shipped different endings to different theaters which was mm. wild and i don't think they have the balls to do something like that with this even though the tech would be easier you don't even have to go the full netflix route you could just send a fucking different version to peacock to amazon to netflix and depending on which version you watch the events are slightly you can different. have people in the theater do like vote on their phones what, what yeah. do they want yeah, in and that then moment live stream. yeah exactly but they don't have the, the balls to do that yeah so that's the thing is that I know they're going to play it easy and they're just going to make a generic ass slasher movie, which is what the games expanded on. But now they're just going to go back to the original cliche. So, man. Yeah. Anyways, well, I think that's it for news. Rest of this is not really worth talking about. Oh, just Stalker 2 is coming out this year. Hopefully, maybe please September 5th. <laughs> is this I, I'm very excited for that game, but this this is the third or fourth time they've delayed it. Yeah. But it could come out. I'm excited. Actually, I'm I'm seriously contemplating playing Stalker One again. It's been a long time. I think did I you play. did you did you play and beat the first one before? I think so. I can't. I beaten played and beaten one of them, but I have no recollection of it at all. Um, gotcha. So I was like, oh, maybe that I should play be. one of them for stream or something. And I think oh. there's also a multiplayer mod for one of them. So then I was like, oh, what if we multiplayered it for stream? Uh, I, I so. want to love those games so bad. I haven't tried them in like seven or eight years, but every time I tried them, I always bounced off them. But I wanted to love them so but, bad. Do you like so the Metro totally games? I would give them another shot. Uh, yeah, I played a little bit of the first one. It was good. I feel like they're like... So Metro games, I would call light immersive sim, but they're more, more yeah. linear. I would say Stalker's way more immersive sim. Yeah, it's uh, more hardcore. Open. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, well, actually, let's. I'll write that on the stream doc. I uh, yeah, it's not, that's a, bad not idea. a bad idea. Stalker, I hardly know her. Um, folks, uh, it's time for wishlist spotlight. Uh, I was gonna do one game, and then I chose another game. So suck it. I can't remember if you've done this game before. If you had, Jake, you can cut this. Um, our we our Steam wishlist spotlight this week is Times of Progress, which uh. I, I, Ian, I want you to guess why I chose this game. Why did it grab my attention? Is it because there's trains in it? It's because there's trains in it, everybody. <laughs> um, it's a city builder set during the Industrial Revolution, which means kids 
can work for free. Uh, you can build industries to extract natural resources, produce goods to satisfy the population, manage transportation routes by train and ship, and expand on procedurally generated maps to trade with nearby cities. Uh, it just looks like a Sim City banished city builder isometric view. It's got this like kind of coolish muted art style that I'm, I'm very into. Um, you know what it reminds me of, kind of loosely, uh, mini motorways. Oh yeah, yeah. It does kind of look like an isometric. Like it looks mini like motorways. a like a fun, like cute little, like sim, like a mini sim game. Uh, I I just scrolled down and there's a sign up for the closed beta, so I'm going to be signing up for that. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. A one way to get me to talk about your game is to put a train in it or run train in it. Uh, and I think uh, I, I'm i very excited for this game. Times of progress. Uh, check it out on Steam. Wishlist them so they can be cool and make money and be popular. Uh, thank you. Uh, folks, that's going to be the show. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit the outro music and we're going to get out of here. Um, Ian, thanks so much for joining me this week. People can find you at Think Gibson on Twitter. Uh, Karen, thank you also for being here. People can find you uh, on the internet and stuff like that or playing Lethal Company with us. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Um, we will thank be you for back. having me. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Uh, we'll be back uh, this uh, uh, Saturday. Sorry, could I interrupt real quick? Tomorrow, Pokemon with guns. I'll be streaming it. Pal World is out. Ooh. Pal World's out tomorrow. Uh, I might be streaming that at some point, uh, so check it out. Um, <laughs> uh, Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, we'll be playing the last episode of Psychonauts with David. I did catch up from where all the progress we lost. Uh, so I'm back and I'm ready to go. It'll be a fun time. So we'll see you all there. Bye. Bye.